morning. So we have a very special guest to start our um, in-space resource utilization session. We have this morning um, Matthias Link from the Space Affairs Office of the Ministry of the Economy in Luxembourg. And I think everybody is anxious to hear about the um, um, in-space resource utilization initiative that Luxembourg has been uh, supporting uh, vigorously in the last uh, year and a half. Okay, thank you very much, Amara, and good morning to everyone. So, as Amara said, I'm, first of all, I would like to thank the organizers for inviting me here and giving me the opportunity to present you our Space Resources.lu initiative. As some of you know, we launched it yeah, in February last year, so one and a half years ago, and I will give you in this talk a, 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 an update on where we stand with that initiative, what we achieved in, one and a half, in the past one and a half years. But I will also first start with giving you a bit of information on, on Luxembourg, because I'm not sure that everyone knows it well. So the first half of my talk will be about Luxembourg, our current space sector, our space policy objectives, and then I will go to the Space Resource Initiative and also the progress we made. So first of all, for those who don't know, I think it's very important to to understand where we come from in Luxembourg in space. So we have been active in space for the last 30 years already, more than 30 years. And our first big endeavor into space was the creation of the company SES, Société Européenne des Satellites, which was established in Luxembourg in 1985. So from the start, we had a very commercial oriented approach, which distinguishes us from many other countries that have a more governmental pushed uh, space policy. So we created SES in 85 and of course SES grew through the years and has become today one of the leading operators in geostationary orbit. Um, in 2005 uh, we had another important uh, milestone in our space history when we became a mem member state of ESA, the European Space Agency, and when we also started defining a real national uh, national policy for the development of space. And then finally, the, the, the last milestone that we had was then in 2016, last year, when we announced uh, publicly that we would promote the exploration and utilization of space resources. So just a few words again on SES. I mean, this is exactly how what we want to replicate now a bit with space resources. So really starting with an idea, a very bold vision for what we want to do, and then executing is it in a very close interaction between private companies and the government and all other actors, stakeholders of, of space in Luxembourg, and then hopefully coming to, to a situation where we can really have an impact. And for SES, impact means that we really saw the birth of the private SATCOM industry, and just as a reminder, SATCOM is really the industry that that is supporting the whole space industry. I mean, that's where the money is made today. And without the SATCOM sector, we would probably not see many space activities, many other space activities. So on our, on our sector, on our current sector, we have around 30 private companies and a few research institutes that are active in space. And what is interesting, even if we are a very small country, we cover quite some uh, part of the, val the space value chain. We have companies active in, in the space segment, in the ground segment. We do in-space operations, of course, with the legacy of SES, but also other ones. And we go also into the downstream application services sector with data analytics and applications. So actually, I will go very fast. But if you have questions at the end, I'm, of course, uh, ready to, to answer everything you, you would like to know and go into more details. Um, so, just to say that, again, our, our, our space policy, space sector, and all the different actors that we have overall can be defined as being entrepreneurial, commercially oriented, well coordinated, well I hope so, and also focused on innovation. So we are very closely linked all together in Luxembourg, and I think that's how we can also move forward with things, that, uh, things like space resource utilization. 
Now, on our space policy objectives, uh, we have defined uh, already in 2008 our primary, the primary goals of our space policy. Overall, the development of the space sector has to be seen as a way to diversify our national economy. As a small country, it's very important to, to, to find, um, yeah, find attractive sectors that can be pushed. We cannot do everything, so we try to concentrate on a few uh, sectors with priority. We would like to expand the space capabilities that we already have, find new, cap attract new capabilities, develop them, of course improve the competitiveness of the actors that we already have. Being a very small country and especially for space, I think it's important to look internationally, try to uh, engage with other countries, other regions of the world, and of course we would like to maintain our SATCOM leadership. That's a different topic than the space resources one, but equally important for us. So you understood that we don't have a space agency in Luxembourg. We have no large research institute, but we have a commercial or oriented approach. So we work very much hand in hand with our companies to achieve our policy objectives. We have defined a number of priority uh, areas that we would like to push. So we have value-added services, the ground segments, subsystems and components for satellites, complete microsatellites, we have a company that builds them in Luxembourg, and the fifth one that is mo more recent is of course space resource utilization. Um, a few words on how we implement this strategy. We have a number of different instruments and funding, funding programs. We have a national <coughs> program called Lux Impulse, where we can fund our own companies. But we, of course, very heavily work with ESA, the European Space Agency. That's clearly our main tool to develop our space sector. As a member of the European Union, we have access, of course, to the union programs, and we try also to involve our companies in, in these programs. We also developed over the years some investment instruments. So what we have seen, especially now with the new initiative, is that many of the new companies are not looking for research grants. They are looking for equity investments. So you need also as a government to be able to, to address these specific needs. We have a state investment bank, as many other countries have. We have since a few years a Luxembourg Future Fund that can also invest. And we are currently working very strongly on a Luxembourg Space Fund. I'll come back to that a bit later. Uh, for the rest, yes, of course, we have uh, some advantages about our about Luxembourg, the competencies that you have the, there. Uh, but again, I would like to stress that we are not active in space since last year. We are active in space in, since more than 30 years. So now I come to the core of, of this talk. I think that's the most interesting for you, uh, our space resource initiative. So first of all, why space resources? When we started the initiative last year, of course, there were many, many questions also from our population because most of the people simply did not understand why you would think about mining asteroids and the moon and other celestial bodies. And of course, in, you know about this, so I don't need to explain you what space resources are. But for most of the people, this is really sound, sounds like complete science fiction. And when our minister announced it in last year, it was really, people thought uh, that he was going mad, actually. So crazy, this was uh, not real. Huh? So in the, in the meantime, actually, it's, take, it, it, it's, it's been taken much more seriously. Nobody laughs anymore, and especially since the people see that it's actually real and something is happening. Huh? So, so why space resources? Of course, they are available and valuable. And again, this is not something that I need to explain to you. But I, I would say the most important case for space resources is that it will enable Earth independent architectures by using the materials that are already up there. And if we as a space community, community overall can free ourselves from the heavy reliance on launchers, this will completely uh, transform the overall space uh, economy and it, it will allow to create a future space economy. It will also enable deeper space exploration. That's probably also very interesting for the scientists like you. And what's more is that we are also convinced that even if this is mid-long term, it still has a value in the near term 
by developing technologies that can also be um, employed in, in other sectors and, uh, and also in terrestrial markets. So what we announced in, uh, in 2016 is uh, the main objective here. We want as a country to contribute to the peaceful exploration and sustainable utilization of space resources for the benefit of humankind. That's really our overall objective. In the end, what we would like to do is to promote this as much as possible and of course, at least in Europe, to play a major role in it. Um, the opportunity in the meantime has also been confirmed by big names, which at least shows that it's not completely crazy. I mean, you had a, a very good re announcement on, by ULA uh, last, last year on their CIS Lunar um, vision, where they also rely on space resources. You have a new, very recent report by Accenture a tech uh, IT company that, uh, that talks about space mining and uh, you had a, a report also this year by Goldman Sachs, um, whether you like them or not, <laughs> everybody has to decide, but at least it's a big name that clearly stated that this is real and not science fiction. So obviously there are other people that believe in it as well, but of course we know that there are still many challenges that need to be solved and over the past years we try to understand them and also to see how we, what we as a small country in Europe could do to address these challenges. So we see mainly four areas of challenges. Of course, the technical area, that's where all of you as scientists are also involved in, is that first of all, we need to have a better understanding of what is there. We need to be sure when we go to an asteroid and want to mine it or the moon, we need to be sure about what we are finding there. And that's of course very difficult at the moment. Uh, because it's not only about the composition, it's also about the physical characteristics that you need to understand in order to be able to, to extract the resources. Um, we think that most of the technical means that are needed actually exist, but of course the maturity varies and depending on the application later you have to work on it. Um, then the second big challenge is the regulatory and legal domain. I won't enter into the details, but the situation overall in and especially in the Outer Space Treaty, is that it's not completely clear how to address this uh, space resource utilization. So th this is really a big challenge on its own because it needs to be clarified so that companies and others can, can work in this domain. Of course, the financials, um, countries alone, space, space agencies alone, and especially Luxembourg alone, will not be able to to pay for this, so we need to be sh to be to find ways to attract private investment here. And if you see uh, some companies that have already been created, they have actually been able to attract uh, money from high net worth individuals, from from venture capital funds. So it's starting to move, and I think that's something we see overall within this so-called new space um, new space new space movement. And then finally, the business, the markets, of course, we talk here about markets that do not yet exist. They are just starting to be created. And here, I think also the role of space agencies and governments is crucial to, to be sure that we cre can create these future markets. So what have we done in Luxembourg to address this? We have come up with a strategy last year where we try to address all the different challenges in the best way. So we really want to be sure that at least in Luxembourg, but also worldwide, we have an, an overall framework that makes sense, that makes sense for the commercial companies to develop their plans. And this is why we work on these five pillars as you see here. First of all, we promote space resources. So it's a lot about communication, explaining what you do. It's also to political, the international relations sides. We have uh, we built a regulatory framework starting in Luxembourg, but also working with internationally to come to an international framework on space resources. We work on developing top tier talent in our education system and public research. We offer R&D support, especially to companies. And finally, we develop instruments to provide long term investment equity to companies. So coming to the progress we made to give you a bit of an idea of what happened in Luxembourg during the past one and a half years. We formed an, an advisory board to advisors on a very high level. And for example, we have 
Pete Worden and Jean-Jacques Dordain that advise us, so they give a lot of visibility to our initiative and help us also promoting it. Uh, last year, well, that, this year, it's more on the communication side, but we were selected in Luxembourg as official headquarters of the Asteroid Day organization, and we also hosted the, the main Asteroid Day from Luxembourg. It was co coordinated from Luxembourg, so we had a full day also in Luxembourg on uh, talks about asteroids and also uh, asteroid mining. And of course, we go to different uh, international conferences and shows to, to promote the idea. On the regu regulatory and legal side, I think that was one of the main priorities when we started the initiative and we were successful. So on 1st of August this year, we enacted a law on the exploration and use of space resources. With that, we are now the second country in the world that has such a law. And to give you an idea, it was approved by 58 positive votes out of 60 in our parliament. So that shows that, you're, that our country is really giving a very strong support to this uh, new sector. Um, but I have to add also here on this uh, pillar, it, it's crucial for us to have an international agreement on this. So we see our law as a first step on clarifying the things. You see here that in Article 1 we say that space resources are capable of being owned. Of course, this is our interpretation of the international situation and it's valid only for our own uh, companies and uh, stakeholders. At the same time, we engage within the UN COPUS, for example, or the Hague Space Resource Governments Working Group to work on an international framework for these activities because in the long term, of course, this will be needed. When you think about two entities going to the same small asteroids to mining it, I mean, you need to have a way to, to address this situation. Um, on, the, on the skills side, talent side, we have initiated this year together with ESA and Airbus and other partners the Space Exploration Masters competition, the first competition in Europe to focus on exploration and finding new ideas for exploration. And we also engage with the International Space University and other international universities to further develop our own university and come up with uh, and new ways to develop, to train the, the workforce, future workforce. We have in Luxembourg a number of research centers that already address at least parts of this future uh, value chain of space resources and we work together hand in hand with them now to develop these new competencies. And here I think it's very important to mention the, the ASIME 2016 workshop, so that's an a uh, conference that we organized last year in Luxembourg. ASIME stands for Asteroid Science Interactions with Mine Engineering. And we organized it together with Amara sitting here. I think it was a very successful workshop. And I recognize some of the people that were present in Luxembourg last year. And I can already tell you that uh, J.R. Galash will give a bit more details on, on this conference in, in his talk. Then, uh, well, on instruments, R&D instruments, I won't go into the detail, but I have to mention that also ESA at the start was a bit um, surprised that uh, Luxembourg was going to address space resource utilization, and I understand them. I mean, we never uh, worked in exploration before, but over the months and uh, the, the past one and a half years, they became more and more convinced as well on what we are doing. And this resulted in an agreement that we signed at the Paris Air Show this year, where also ESA uh, will um, work together with us to have a better understanding of such asteroid mining or moon mining missions. Um, finally, on the investment side, I mean, this is clearly a very different topic than the, the science side, but as, as I said, it's also extremely important for the companies. We signed a cooperation agreement with the European Investment Bank also this year, specifically on space resource utilizations. I think that if you were not convinced before, I mean, if a bank like the European Investment Bank signs such an agreement, then I mean, this is really proof that this is not science fiction. <laughs> we have, uh, so they will uh, think together with us about ways on how to address this funding problem. Uh, we have also the Luxembourg Future Fund, I mentioned it already. And uh, what I said, I mean, we are at the moment working with high priority on a dedicated space investment fund that will also allow us to more easily invest in companies. I think 
This is just to recap, so I won't mention it again, given that I just have one minute left. Um, but finally, I would like to mention that since uh, we started the initiative, we have five companies that have five companies that address specifically space resource utilization that have established in Luxembourg and have begun operations in Luxembourg. So what we see here is that we are really trying to start uh, a new sector in Luxembourg and we are hoping that this sector will very quickly also go uh, expand in the world. So here you see the upcoming events. I, I want to mention the New Space Europe conference on the 16th and 17th of November. This conference will be exclusively dedicated to new space, so you're all welcome to join that conference in Luxembourg. And I would like to mention for you especially the next ASIME in 2018 on the 16th and 17th of April. So I think in the interest of time I have to stop. <laughs> Thank you very much. I'm, I'm of course available for any further information you, you would like to have. Thank you very much. Certainly, yeah. thank you very much. And of course, we are also active in Horizon 2020, and you can certainly count on our vote uh, for this topic in, within the program committees. Okay, I think that's it. I think we have to go on to jail. Okay.